Hey guys, me Adam Man here, and tonight we're going to take a closer look at the underside of our 93 limited edition barn find Miata with the help of Pico the cat. And what we want to try and find out tonight is how rusty it is underneath. If there's anything that's going to be a deal breaker as far as potentially saving this car and getting it back on the road and just have a good look around and explain a few things to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick walk around. We've got that big dent there, of course, to contend with. We've got a bent license plate bracket, which is no biggie. We can remove it. There's two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the thing onto those mounts there where the bolt hole is hanging down. Uh, you can see where it gets backed into. It bends that part right there that you're looking at in the center of the screen. And here we are. Let's have a good look. So I've got this thing up in the air for you. And right away, you can see that we've got some very rusty rotors. We've got, you know, brakes that have been sitting unused in a field basically for 13 years. We've got a fair bit of rust on the upper control arm. Our Bilstein suspension is actually not that bad. It still looks pretty good. The springs are one inch drop lowering springs from the factory on this car. And they're not too rusty actually, just a tiny bit there where the car was, where that kind of sits on it when the weight of the car is there. And got some subframe corrosion, which doesn't look serious. We've got some bushings on the sway bar link. So new sway bar links would be a good idea on this car. Uh, we got lots and lots of cobwebs. We have no rocker panel rust. We've got a little bit of something here, but it, it's not like it's, it's almost like something stuck on there rather than, it doesn't feel like rust coming through, which is what it looks like it is, but it doesn't feel that way. Uh, we've got like a six pack of spider nests here. That's pretty gross. And way more up there. So let's have a closer look at the lower control arm here. And it looks pretty rusty, but I've seen a lot worse as well. Now, getting this apart, if we decide that we need to do any work could be a problem. Um, underneath here, you're looking at the bottom of the strut where it mounts onto the control arm. That there is the bolt that goes through the bottom of the strut. Moving on to here, we've got the lower control arm bolt. That's a big one, big long one, and it's very difficult to get out on a car that has rust issues. Uh, it tends to weld itself to the knuckle here. It comes through the bushing here and then gets stuck in here. And if you you can kind of see there's a bit of a cutout here and you can actually get your finger in and feel the, the bolt. So if you're planning to take your Miata apart, you want to definitely pump some penetrating oil in there first to improve the chances of you being able to get that bolt to turn and come out. So that's the other end right there. And then we've got the underneath this cover here is the fuel filter. So it will need a new one of those for sure. Um, that is one of your chassis grounds that is right on to the power plant frame and the power plant frame is that aluminum girder that runs the length of the car all the way to the transmission and that's what connects the transmission to the differential. Uh, we're looking at our original catalytic converter here which is good because there's lots of platinum in that. Uh, we've got our drive shaft with rather rusty looking U-joints. We have our, that's where our bolts go through to mount the PPF to the diff. The PPF is the power plant frame. And our diff right here is a limited slip diff. And you can tell if you look at the ears. So the little thing that sticks up on the left there that's sort of pointing off to the side and then the other one here. So I'll get in there and point to those for you. If I can reach. So you'll notice that that one there is different than the other one here. So that one will have a matching one on the opposite side and this triangular looking one will have another one that matches. 
That's how you can tell you have a viscous limited slip differential on a 1.6 liter car. So uh, 1990 to 1993 in North America, that's what the viscous diff um, stub axles look like. They have different types of ears. So it has two different type, types on there. If it were just an open diff, it would have four that looked exactly like that. Uh, that there is not looking very straight. I think that's that's had a hit. And that there is the subframe brace right there, or subframe connector. We've got an exhaust that doesn't look too bad. It's probably fine. Uh, we've got another rusty lower control arm here. But, you know, uh, a good wire brush, a cleanup, and some paint. That might not be too bad after all. We don't have any leaks, really, in the diff area. We've got the drain plug there. We've got a little bit of staining from a little bit of stuff that might be getting past the crush washers, but nothing to be concerned about here. Um, frame rails on on that side, I've got a little bit of, little bit of cave in. You can see where it's run over some speed bumps a little too quick. So it's bashed them in a little, but nothing too serious. Uh, this side, we've got a similar amount of frame rail damage and cave in and you'll notice that where i've jacked it up right here it's at the end of the frame rail where it's reinforced so i'm able to jack it up there without doing any damage if i was to jack it up right there i'd be caving that in even more but it's actually there's a seam that you can see in the center of the screen here from there to the end it's like a double thickness so it is very sturdy and that's why we're able to jack it up there without caving in the frame rails and let's take you further down here. Uh, I'll show you the drain holes while I'm here too, which is the reason why the rocker panels aren't rusted out yet. Um, we've got one there and another one right there in the center of the screen. Somebody has taken the time to open those up so that water could flow through them easily because that's the main reason why we get rocker panel rust on these Miatas. Now, at the front, we've got the front fender here. I'll back you out a bit so you can see where you're at. And what we've got is we've got a nice big dent right in here. So that would be probably something that would want to be replaced at some point. Cat, he's patrolling while I'm doing this here. Uh, yeah, that's been opened right up which is great. Uh, same with that one. That means the water's been escaping from there. It hasn't been collecting in there and rusting things out. You can really see how big that dent is from down here. Uh, you can also notice that in this crack here, there's quite a bit of sand and debris. And so this is a good chance that this is packed to probably about here with sand and dirt and leaves and all that type of stuff. So on the back side of that fender would be pretty rusty, I would imagine. But the rest of it's not too bad. Okay, let's go around the other side. I'll just show you. Oh, there's another bit of damage here. You can see. Now oh, the bumper's actually off its clip here in the front. Yeah, that's been that's been pushed in for sure. Yeah. You can see where it should be. It should be in right there, but it's not. Um, springs in the front look okay. Not a problem there. Tires are scary. Definitely needs tires. We've got lots of cracking in the treads. We've got cracking in the sidewall. Uh, these tires are ancient, of course, so we wouldn't dream of trying to reuse them. Uh, we've got a lot of cobwebs on the caliper there. And uh, let's go have a look at the other side here. We've got a chipped chipped marker light here, signal light, I should say. Also a DRL on these, daytime running light runs through there. We've got, like I say, we've got our license plate bracket. The rad's in not bad shape, but that has to come out. If we're gonna do any work on this, that rad's getting thrown away. And we've got a nice big dent in this fender here. So that's, that's a no-go, that's gotta go in the bin. 
fenders for these from the dealer aren't that expensive. So it would definitely be worth getting a couple of new ones and replacing them. Uh, right there, we've got, uh, you know, the same situation with the brakes as we do on the other side. Even more cobwebs actually on this side, which is amazing. And uh, we've got uh, the cat helping again. So right here, we've got more bad paintwork. Uh, we've got some bad paintwork down this whole side. It looks like they only painted it maybe to here. I'm trying to feel the tape line there. Yeah, so yeah, the paint's not the greatest on this car. It's not bad, it's good from a distance, but it's got some issues. Uh, again, we've got the same issue that we had on the other side right here, um, but we don't have rust, which is great. Those rocker panels are solid. And we've got our, our drains have been opened up right here. Got our control arms. Everything looks okay under here, actually. Just needs a serious cleanup and, you know, nice coat of paint to preserve it. Make sure it doesn't get any worse. We've got our drains right here on the back. Look pretty good as well. Yeah, they've been opened right up, so they're good. And this is our missing center cap, which is a bummer because they're really expensive. But uh, there you go. We'll zoom in on that tire there and just show you how sketchy tires are after they've been, A, left outside for 13 years, and also they're really old anyway. So there we go. Okay, so that's kind of a wrap on this part of the, the series here. We got lots of surface rust, no significant other rust, like that's coming through the body anywhere. So I'm pleased about that. Yeah, we got a little bit of stuff that needs to be cleaned out. Overall, the body on this car is good. So I'm actually, I haven't found any major surprises that I wasn't expecting. Uh, we've got a cracked tail light. We've got some really bad paint on the rear bumper. And we've got where the factory spoiler used to be, right here. This is the Canadian spec spoiler, so it was a wing rather than a duck bill. And of course, this is a mess in here. But overall, it's pretty solid. It's a good. Uh, it's definitely a good candidate for putting a lot of time and money into. But we'll see where we get to when we open up the fuel tank, and that'll be the next video. I think we're gonna get inside. Uh, open a bunch of things up and find out what we're dealing with and then we can attempt to fire the car up once we sort All of that stuff out and maybe put some fresh fuel in it. There you go guys. Thanks for watching Tune in for episode 3 and I'll make uh, as many videos as I can for you Please subscribe and hit that like button and I'll chat with you soon